guys uh welcome back to my channel uh so i'm going to be giving you guys an update here uh so my one of my last videos was uh regarding the door field blowing up on me and um smoking and about to catch fire uh so what i did was i in my last video i stated that i had a brand new in the box replacement because i always buy everything in pairs and I, I was thinking about if i was going to use it or not and i decided i'm not going to use it um I'm, I'm just going to give it to somebody else that that me wants to do you know wants it or wants to use it um I, i'm just looking for more of a um a better fix right now because i've experimented experimented with these for um, the last three or four years now so um that's normally where my inverter does go i have a brand new inverter that i bought it's not the best but it is a pure sine wave inverter and it's a it's a thousand watt inverter and the reason i went with a thousand watt inverter this time instead of like a three thousand watt is because now I'm not running my deep freeze right now. I have two deep freezes and they're both of them are finally empty with so there's no food in them anymore. Uh, so I'm not going to be running these deep freezes until I uh, finish the brand new off grid house with a 48 volt system. Uh, so really, there's not going to be too much pool in my system anymore. Um, besides my regular refrigerator, like satellite dish and lights, which is all LEDs and um, like phones and stuff like that when I plug into the wall. So as far as electricity consumption and load, it's not going to be too intense. So I'm pretty pretty confident the 1000 watt inverter, pure sine wave inverter will, will hold up so that way I can get into the new place. Um, but today, um, before I put the new inverter on and fire it up and everything, um, I cleaned up my batteries a little bit because, you know, especially if you have your batteries outside, I want to point out. I mean, there's, you know, you got geckos, um, lizards, um, spiders, slugs, you know, just insects in general that'll you know they'll crawl everywhere you know and these this is outside underneath a, a covering here right so it is protected from the the weather um but it's it's since it's still open and it's not like an enclosed box it, the the top of the batteries will get dirty like just you know just over time just you know stuff blowing on there and like i said insects and stuff uh so i did it what i did was i went ahead and rinsed them off a little bit i disconnected everything rinsed them off and then i went ahead and uh opened up all my battery cells um the the tops there the unscrew here right here so um i went ahead and opened them all up because you need to do these are wet cells um these are the six volt golf cart batteries um so every so often you know you, like i said in the last video make sure you do your checks on your system and stuff so considering i'm putting the new um inverter in i decided uh, you know i'm just going to go ahead and clean up the tops of them a little bit um open them all up and then go ahead and put um um distilled water in them top them all the way off i mean not all the way up to the top but there's a level in there there's like a let me see if i can kind of show you what i'm talking about uh let's see okay there's like a little notch mark right there on the edge and then where it goes down so i fill the water up to the very edge but leave a gap right from the top usually the gap is about a, maybe maybe about an inch or so uh so right now i uh, went ahead and filled up all my batteries um You'd be surprised how much water batteries um will will take up. I mean, they the battery the battery when you put water in there and stuff, it'll last a really long time. So it's not like you're putting it in every month or anything like that. Um, but when it does come time for you to top them all off and make sure they're all level and stuff, uh, you'll go through like I went through two and a half gallons of um distilled water here, and I'm just using uh you want to make sure you do use distilled water. Uh, don't use um tap water or anything because it's got chlorine and stuff in it. Uh, so right here, as you guys can see, this is the local brand we have over here, Mini Huni uh, Water Company. I'm not advertising for them or anything. I'm just saying. And distilled water, is, <laughs> I mean, you'd think it would be a little bit cheaper than, than regular water, but it's not. And then right there, it says right there, um, steam distilled water. So this is 100% distilled water. So this is what I use to top off my batteries. I mean, you can go to your local Walmart or Target or um grocery store whatever and you can buy gallons of uh, just like this in a different brand name of distilled water and stuff and that's what i use to fill them up uh so yeah i went through i think yeah two two and a half gallons i believe yeah two and a half gallons of water topping them all off so that way now i know they're all full and then what i do after i um after i fill them all the way up what i like to do is um i loosen all the caps because i have nothing on right now right the inverter is not even installed yet, so it's a good time to let the batteries gas off. So I fill them all the way up. Um, I put a charge on them. Right now, I got the solar panels on there. Uh, so right now, the solar panels, uh, 
clouds are passing over. Usually I get about 50 something amps, but right now it's like 20 something amps. No big deal though. So we're putting the charge on the batteries. My battery voltage is 14.8, 14.9, 15. Uh, that's when the clouds come back out and all that kind of stuff. So um, right now I'm just letting them charge up and I'm letting them gas off. And then um, once, they, once they slow down gassing off and stuff, um, I'll probably actually unplug the solar panels. Then I'll let the batteries equalize for probably about like four hours or something. At least four hours. I'll just let them all sit because normally my batteries don't ever sit really because, you know, they're always on it. There's always something running in my house, normally like the refrigerator and stuff like that. So for the last three years or so, or a little over three years, maybe four years now, um, you know, I've been doing my maintenance on them. And so sometimes it's good just to shut down your whole system, top everything off, let the batteries gas off, let them do their thing, right? And then, you know, you, while you're charging them up, let them gas off. And then go ahead and disconnect any charging source going to it. Um, normally, if you have like a outback um, uh, charge controller, it, it'll do the e like some of the other charge controllers out there too. They have equalizing on it, where it'll charge the batteries up for you know for so much, get to a top voltage, and then it'll actually basically shut itself off to allow the batteries to equalize all the way across the bank, and then that allows it to settle and rest for a little bit, so everything can take the equal charge. And then it'll kick back on and start charging again. So in my case, um, I, I don't have that on this house, but I have it for the new house. So I'm gonna I'm doing it manually right now. So like I said, I just put two and a half gallons of uh, water in there of distilled water, uh, charging them up a little bit. Then I'm gonna take off the charge, let them sit for at least four hours to equalize out. And then what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and put the solar panels back on the batteries to to start boosting it back up again. And then I'll go ahead and put that um, replacement. Um, cheap uh, pure sine wave inverter um i was debating if i was going to go buy the really expense expensive um inverter but uh i i don't want to do that because not right now at least uh because i am doing the the uh, new house right now so that's that's where my money's going right now so i'll get back to you guys when i put the new inverter on all right guys we're back um so I've been letting my batteries equalize and all that good stuff. Um, like I said, I put uh, two and a half gallons of distilled water in there. Uh, these batteries are roughly four years old. I don't know why in some of my videos I, I keep saying three years old. that I've been living off the grid for three years. But technically it's actually been like more like four years. But for some reason I keep thinking three years. I don't know. Time flies by so fast that you know you don't, you don't think about things sometimes. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's all topped off. That's all been equalized and ready to go now. So uh, my um, box just came in the mail here. So I want to share with you guys what I did um, for um, for this place and for the new house. So first thing is first. Let's talk about safety, right? So I went ahead and bought a five pack of smoke detectors. Or smoke alarm, I guess you could call it, whatever. Uh, so there's a five pack in here. Um, this five pack... Um, um, I'm gonna use one or two. I'm probably I'm, it's gonna be kind of awkward to put one out here because it's an open environment on on one side. But I may put a smoke detector because my inverter goes here, so I may actually just put a smoke detector right above it. Like I may just move this junk fucking thing that came with my solar panels a long time ago. I'll move this thing out of the way. Put the solar panels. I mean the charge controller. Mm, sorry, inverter there, and then probably maybe right above it someplace that's not in, interfering with my wires. I'll go ahead and mount that um, smoke detector. So that way at least you have some type of first line, first line of defense if something was to, you know, catch fire and stuff. Because if you guys were been following my videos and you guys seen my last one, I, you know, I was, you know, talking about the concerns and the dangers of, you know, not monitoring your system or, you know, um, just the bad things that could happen if, you know, worst case scenarios. So I got a five pack of smoke detectors. I also bought another five pack of smoke detectors for the brand new house because I want to put some in the, um, in the power room, up in every single room. So it's just a safety thing you should always have in your in your home anyway, smoke detectors. Then um, I'm going to go buy probably two more uh, uh, fire extinguishers here. Sorry, the sun's in the way. So uh, I got this. This one came from Home Depot. Uh, I tried to buy them online, but since I live in Hawaii... Uh, <laughs> That's the one thing, guys, I want to mention to you guys. You know, if you guys live in the mainland and stuff, 
compared to Hawaii, you guys have so much more opportunities and you guys can get stuff a lot cheaper than we can in Hawaii because, you know, everything gets shipped, you know, to it has to get shipped in or flown in. And every time it gets shipped in or anytime somebody touches it and it gets pushed into another, you know, um, boat or whatever, they're taxing us on it. So before we actually get a product in Hawaii, not only is it already marked up, but it's already been taxed probably three or four times. So by the time we get stuff in Hawaii, it is very expensive. Okay. So, um, and some of the downsides too about living in, in Hawaii is when you order certain things, um, they won't ship to Hawaii unless it's like a big box store where they're shipping it on a boat in a big um, container. Um, that's usually the only way we can get like uh, specialty items and stuff like that. Uh, so, because I, I was trying to buy um, these um, fire extinguishers online because they're a lot cheaper, um, but they just wouldn't ship to Hawaii. Every place I looked wouldn't ship to Hawaii. So I just had to, I was forced to go down to my local Home Depot and, and pay for one anyway. But yeah, here's a smoke detect, uh, fire extinguisher. So I'm going to have one for my little cabin I'm living in now. And then I'm going to go probably buy two more, like I said. Put one on the bottom, maybe outside someplace. Um, like underneath, but not in the sun. And then I'll put one up in the house, so just in case. So safety, safety, right? Uh, smoke detectors, smoke alarms, fire extinguishers. Okay. So now, uh, let me. I just got the box in. It just came in the mail. Uh, so here's the replacement um, inverter that I'm going to be using. I've never used this inverter before. Um, the, the only reason I went with this inverter was, for one, I didn't need a whole bunch of power out of it. Um, I, I wanted to go with a pure sine wave inverter this time for the for the for my cabin here. For that house, I got the pure signs and stuff, but for this house, I've always used modified. So I'm going to use a pure sign this time. This one is a thousand watt uh, continuous power. And 2,000 watt um, surge or peak. So there it is, brand new in the box, guys. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Um, usually, when you do buy, um, you know, um, an inverter and stuff, not all the time, but some most of the time, they'll actually come with these power wires that you connect to the ends, and then you can connect them to your batteries. But since my wires are still connected and they're actually thicker than this wire here. Uh, I'm going to use the ones I still have pre-installed. So all I got to do is just take the ring terminals and and put it to um, tie it to the back of the unit here. And this one also came with a remote, which I never usually get in a <laughs> inverter box, which is kind of different. But I probably won't use it anyway, um, just because most of the time I leave everything on. So, so yeah, I'm going to unbox this bad boy uh, and uh, mount it up there and show you guys what I got going on. Alright guys, uh, we got the new inverter on, um, it, it, it literally took like maybe three minutes because I already had the other wires hanging from the last one that I put on the side, those red and black ones right there coming off my battery bank. Uh, so it was pretty easy, I just put them onto the terminals, tighten that up, then I just plugged my, um, my kilowatt meter. Um, that's plugged into my um, Romex that goes into my breaker panel for my house. So I just plugged it in and fired her up. And right now, my well, it's kind of dirty the lens, but it's saying it's pulling 168 watts. So that's what I was saying, guys. You know, you know, you can gauge your inverter towards the load on your house. And so considering I'm not going to be running my two deep freezes until I um, put it on that house on the 48 volt system. So, like I said, I'm not going to be using too much power anymore as far as, I mean, this is with my refrigerator on right now. My, this is that power that you're seeing is actually my refrigerator on and um, my TV in my room. I just walked into my house to make sure it turned on. And yeah, it's all nice and on. So, and then we got the green light right there. So, it means we we got good power and everything and everything's good. Uh, if, the, if the red light popped up, that would um, indicate a fault. Or a protection or overload or something like that uh, this one on the top it's also got the uh, USB plug and it's got a um, remote cable so you can plug in this remote right here that came with the kit uh, that remote right there um, but I'm not going to use the remote because uh, it's just gonna this like all my inverters and everything else just stays on 24 7 so yeah guys we're back up and running now 
and you, you know, I want to tell you guys something. Normally, like with a modified sine wave, and this is a this is a pure sine wave, right? <coughs> so, normally with the modified sine wave, when I you normally like like turn off my system temporarily to do something, and then I turn it back on, it has that surge from the refrigerators and all that stuff powering back on. The modified sine wave inverter will actually like like the fans will turn on right away like woo, until the voltage drops down and the fans kind of taper off and turn off well this one with the pure sign i turned it on no fan turned on it's not even making a noise i mean it's super cold right now so already i'm liking the pure sine wave inverters already i mean i know they're a lot better than the modifieds um, and that's why I bought those Outback um, inverters and stuff for the new house because I want to make sure it's all professional and, you know, it's all done right. So, uh, but this is the first time I'm running a pure sine wave inverter on my small little cabin here that I've been living in for maybe the last four years or whatever. Uh, so, time will tell now. We'll see We'll see how long this thing, this one lasts is on me. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, if you guys want to look at the specs right there. 12 volt, normal. Output is 120 AC at 60 Hertz. This is the model of this this one here. I actually bought this one um, off Amazon, believe it or not. Because I have, like I was stating in my videos, if we live in Hawaii, shipping stuff over here costs a lot of money. So I actually pay for Amazon Prime. And I get a lot, like, you know, I buy a lot of stuff all the time. So um, the Amazon Prime helps out a bit. So that way I don't have to pay for that um, shipping cost. So basically, I, you know, it was a pretty cheap inverter. I think I paid like maybe, I don't know, maybe a hundred and hundred something bucks, maybe 200 bucks for this inverter right around there with free shipping. Uh, so, but it did take about mm, one, two, three, four, about five days for it to arrive here in Hawaii from the mainland. So not too bad. But yeah, she's up and running, and I, I'm, I'm already liking this inverter. When I, t when I turned it on, I didn't even hear the thing like, like, woo. It, it didn't even make any noise. It just turned on and it's working. <laughs> so, that's the good news. And um, my batteries are all topped off, all, all good with water and everything. Now they had a chance to equalize. Um, so basically now, uh, I'm gonna let the system pull down the batteries a little bit, probably back down to maybe 12 point. Uh, 12.30 then I want to go ahead and turn the solar array back on on it and then I'm off and running to the races again and the system's going to keep going uh, so I am going to probably still mount the um, smoke detector right above this one just in case you never know and then um, that's it guys we're back up and running perfect and you know I want to share with you guys something real quick um, since my, my this one you know blew up on me and you know melted down basically um, you know, I didn't want to go put the other one on. So what I did do, I basically ran my generator for the last five days every evening when I came home from work. So I'd come home and then when the sun starts to set, I'd go out there and I'd put, um, half a tank of gas in there and I'll just run the half a tank of gas. And I, I have a hard time going to sleep. So I normally sleep around like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning every night. So, um, I just let it run until then, and then right when it sounds like it wants to cut off or whatever, I'll run out here and just turn it off, and the lights are out for the night. But that gives enough time to, um, you know, freeze everything in my re my refrigerator, because I turned all the dials all the way up, so that way when the refrigerator, I mean, when the generator is on, it is freezing everything to the max. So that way when it cuts off at like 1 o'clock at, at night or whatever, and, you know, I'm not turning it back on to the next day when the sun is setting. So that way everything is nice and frozen, staying nice and solid. And I can go to work and come home and everything is still nice and cold. Uh, so that's what I was doing for the last um, five days before this inverter came in. I mean, I could have put this other in, the, my replacement one on, but, you know, I, I kind of wanted to go back to the roots again, you know. Sometimes you, I mean, living off the grid, so, you know, you start putting all this stuff together, you start getting too comfortable. So it was good to get back to the roots and, um, you know... Um, rough it, you know, basically, well, I mean, I, I guess that's not roughing it, right? Because, I mean, you turn the generator on, you still got electricity and stuff. But, I mean, it makes you wake up and realize, you know, things like, you know, be appreciative of what you have and what you own and the people you have around you and the situation you're in, you know, because every time you may think that you're, you, you know, you have it hard, well, guess what? There's more, there's tons of people out there that's got it even worse than you. You know, they may not even have the money for one battery, 
let alone a generator or anything like that so you know consider you guys selves lucky in the stuff you guys have and stuff you know it's no competition you know you're not trying to keep up with the joneses or the neighbors or you know the rat race or anything like that you know but it was nice for me to go back to the generator and you know humble myself a little bit so that was nice uh, the only thing was I was spending money every night <laughs> on gasoline and that's the whole reason why you put solar panels and wind turbines and you invest into things like this so that way you're not spending money every night on a generator to you know have lights and stuff like that so yeah guys just wanted to give you guys an update and uh yeah she's running guys super happy super happy so uh, this weekend, we're going to go ahead, if the weather weather is permitting, we're going to go ahead and stand the walls up on my new house over here. Um, but we'll see what happens, because last weekend, it was kind of windy, so that's why we didn't stand them up. So it always seems like the one day a week that we I have to work on my house, the wind wants to pick up, and it gives us trouble. Uh, so I'm crossing my fingers this weekend, the weather holds off just enough for one day at least for me, uh, so we can get these walls stood up, and we can start, start building the rest of the walls and start... Um, maybe start putting those trusses on so anyway guys i hope everything's going well for you guys stay positive uh you know if you guys come across issues or something happens you know don't get all down and about about it you know suck it up be a man or woman and you know you know persevere and just keep going forward you know um that's all i can say guys just stay positive so yeah to be continued guys